study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com let's move on share my oh ezzy i see you yeah, I just wanted to bring up a cross-reference, if you can go there, because I am driving. Um, okay. But it is a cross-reference for that Bruce Reed in Second Kings 18. Okay. Second Kings 18. Not the whole chapter. Um, Hezekiah, I wanna... Hezekiah victorious. Uh, invasion, oh. invasion of Judah. Yeah, and I think it's the invasion of Judah. Um, just 21. to give like a brief 21. I think it's, I think it's verse 21. Go ahead. Uh, hold on, let me see. Let me see. I want me to read it out loud so you don't have to. Yeah, uh, but hold on. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at the right. Um... It says, now look, you are trusting in the staff of this broken reed. Egypt, on which if a man leans, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in Yahuwah, our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? So interesting, we'll have to go back earlier and I'm almost at a stopping point. But um, the interesting thing about this is that that, that um, quote is being spoken by the chief, I don't know if you want to call them cupbearer for, um, for the king of, of Assyria, yeah. uh -huh, which is not someone who, you know, supports Yahuwah or is a follower of Yahuwah. Okay. So it, that passage was interesting because uh, he's basically calling out Hezekiah on on how he was paid um, for not not following after the king of Assyria, uh, if I'm making sense. Basically, Hezekiah gave Hezekiah owed the king of Assyria, and instead of paying him from his works or however he needs to pay him, he actually took from the temple of Yahuwah, and in turn. Uh, the king of Assyria is now calling him out on that, asking him, you know, who is it that you trust when you have literally given from your temple from the God that you're saying that you're trusting in because you, you're you really trusting in Egypt. I'm at a stopping point, so let me go to the verse here so it'll make sense. Um, so it starts in verse... I'm going to start in verse... 14. 14? All right. Mm -hmm, because that's when he's given the, I guess, the debt that has to be paid. So it says, And Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda, sent to the sovereign of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Turn away from me. I shall bear whatever you impose on me. And the sovereign of Assyria imposed upon Hezekiah, the sovereign of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Um, and Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Yahuwah, um, and in the treasuries of the sovereign's house. At that time, Hezekiah cut off the doors of the temple of Yahuwah and the doorpost which Hezekiah, sovereign of Yahuwah, had overlaid and gave it to the sovereign of uh, Syria. Um, and so if you skip down um, to where you just read, um, starting in verse 19, it says, and the Rabshakeh, uh, said to them, please say to Hezekiah, this is coming from the king. Thus said the great sovereign, the sovereign of Assyria, mm -hmm. what is this trust in which you have trusted? You have spoken of having counsel and strength for battle, but they are only words of the lips. And in whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Now look, you have put your trust in the staff of the crushed reed. Some of it says bruised reed, which is Egypt. 
on which if a man leans, it shall go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, sovereign of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But when you say to me, we trust in Yahuwah, our Elohim, is it not he whose high places and whose slaughter places Hezekiah has taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, bow yourselves before the slaughter place of Jerusalem? And now I urge you, give a pledge to my master, the sovereign of Assyria. Then I give you 2,000 horses if you are able to put riders on them. And how do you turn back the face of one commander of the least of my master's servants and trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up without Yahuwah against this place to destroy it? Yahuwah said to me, go up against this land and you shall destroy it. So I just wanted to bring this um, example out because in Matthew, it's saying that Yahusha is not, like you said, is not going to, um, you know, crush a reed that is already bruised, where you see um, in the earlier scriptures, because Hezekiah was trusting in the wrong, um, was trusting in Egypt instead of trusting in Yahuwah, they were done away with. But here you see in Matthew where Yahusha is, is healing people, and he is asking them, you know, to trust in him, to follow him, because when you are bruised, he's not going to crush and turn away like he has done in the past or he did with Egypt, because we are, you know, trusting in him. And he's not going to uh, blot out or quench that, that flame, because when you, um, when, you, when you look at a smoking flax, it's the wick that is burned on the lamp. And so once it gets to a certain point, just like with the candle, once it gets to a certain point, you have to cut that wick. But instead of cutting it or 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 blotting it out or quenching it, Yahushua is not going to do that. That's what that that scripture is talking about. So you I just wanted to bring that cross reference. You chose a very difficult portion of our reading to attack, Ezzy. I'm sorry. Very, it's definitely definitely worth reading into. That yeah, that was that was tough. Wow. Um. Yeah, because me and my wife were like, um, because we came across this passage that you took us to. We're like, yeah, we'll go over it. We'll pass that one. But hey, you addressed it and we got it on record. That's good stuff. I have a question. Brokenness. What is brokenness? What is bro what is the brokenness? How do we translate this, right? The 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 physical or the um the metaphorical, right? What is it talking about? So broken, a broken reed, a bruised reed, he will not break. So what is this brokenness that Yahuwah accepts is kind of the question that I wanted to. Well, address. we know, Go ahead. we know he, we know he wants a, a repentant heart. He wants a broken and contrite heart, you know, scripture. I can't remember which scripture it says, but it says that he desires compassion and not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, when you, and it's funny that it's coming from me, you know, dealing with the week that I've had and, and looking at other things for healing and deliverance instead of trusting in him. But when we are bruised, when we are weak, when we are uh, uh, dealing with, with trying to overcome sin, you know, we have to look to him and trust in him because he's not going to lay heavy burdens on us that we're not able to bear. Um, so if we're coming to him with a with a repentant heart, with genuine sincerity, looking for help, looking for, you know, that, um, uh, that comforter um, and the comfort, then, then that's what he's going to give us. He's not going to, what's the other scripture when you ask when your child is hungry, do you give him bread versus a stone? I'm butchering it, but you, you get the point. That I'm, that I'm Excellent. Absolutely. We're going to get into all that. We got a couple scriptures up regarding a lot what you were just paraphrasing. Absolutely. So a lot of people, so I, I, I woke up this morning to do a, to do a uh, off-the-cuff teaching on 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 on Facebook. And I just posted it up on YouTube, but it's not public yet. But basically it says, in the last days, people will not endure sound doctrine. They're going to heap for themselves teachers who will tickle their ears and, and teach them what they want to hear. And so what we have nowadays is a lot of people, the type of brokenness that people like to preach about, is the brokenness of your hurting. You're hurting. Someone hurt you, or you're angry, or you're sad, or, 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 or you're depressed, or you're, you have a lot of anxiety. But the brokenness that Yahuwah is talking about in this passage are people who are broken over their own sin and how they've offended God. 
It's talking about remorse. It's talking about people who are overwhelmed with the burden of their own sin and knowing who to come to for rest and healing. So I wanted to bring that part out because many times this, these types of patches, passages get butchered by the New Age church or New Age religion. I have some scriptures I want to cross-reference on this subject. So I'll go ahead and do that. Here we go. I'm going to share the screen again. Cross-references to this brokenness. Psalms 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. This is what God wants. Yahuwah wants us to be broken, to come before him. I'm sorry I've offended you. I'm sorry that I've offended my brother or my sister. Forgive me. Help me to make things right with them. Give me the strength to approach them and to come to terms with what I've done and to make restitution. That's how you get healing. The New Testament says, confess your sins one to another and you shall be healed. It doesn't say get some self-help book and get somebody to affirm you and lift you up and uplift you and you will be healed. That's not what heals you. You need somebody to tell you the truth to get to the root of what the problem is. Now, if you've been raped or something, somebody really did some harm to you, that's a different story. I can understand all those things. But if you're the one that has sinned and has racked up sins in your life, and the result of you racking up sins in your life is causing you depression, stress, anxiety, you are the cause of the stress, depression, and anxiety. And until you, de with, until you deal with the root cause of the problem, you won't be able to get rid of those surface uh, or manifestations, side effects of your sin. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. It says, for thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity whose name is holy and set apart. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is about humility. It's not about feeling sad and about being a victim. Oh my goodness, look at what they did to me. What about what you did to God? Okay, you may have gotten hurt. Imagine how God feels about how you have abandoned his commands and don't obey him. If you, have, if you can muster up the humility to embrace that and say, you know what? I've offended God. I am worthy of wrath and punishment. but he died for my sins. He paid the price for my debt. That type of humility is what he's not going to deny. And he's going to revive and heal those hearts. Not this fake, phony love that's being preached nowadays. You could do whatever you want, sin all you want. Everything's all about you you playing the victim and projecting your sins off to other people who are actually trying to help you with your situation and tell you the truth. That's that fake love, superficial love. Brother Carl.